Hi viewers, in this video I will show you how I replace my alternator on my G Patriot 2009 2.4 liter. In the last 50 days, I noticed a chirping noise coming from the engine or a component around it. To locate the source of the noise with precision, I decided to use my old custom stethoscope. The tool can work with or without contact. In this case, the noise was getting louder near the alternator. I removed the coolant reservoir to be able to touch the housing with the plastic pipe. Effectively, the sound came from the alternator or the OED pulley. Since the part was 11 years old, I was not surprised I had to replace it. To be able to remove it, the vehicle was jacked up on the right hand side and properly secured on jack stands. To gain access from under the vehicle, I removed the engine dust shield. With more room, it was easy to double check the source of the noise. After the second test, I was quite sure the noise was coming from the alternator OED pulley. Before removing any more parts, I disconnected the negative cable from the battery and I added a plastic cap to prevent any bad electrical contacts. Even if there is more than one way to remove the alternator, the Jeep company recommends to remove it from the lower right hand side. To be more efficient during the work, I prepared some tools in advance. A 16mm wrench should be used to rotate the belt tensioner. For more details, watch my YouTube G Patriot 2009 2.4 liter serpentine drive belt replacement. To be able to remove the alternator pivot bolt, the adjacent idler pulley had to be removed. Again, a 16mm wrench is required to undo the bolt. I checked the pulley's bearing and it was fine. To gain more working space and ease the work, I moved away a section of the fender liner and I held it with a bungee cord. Then it was time to lower the AC compressor. Three bolts are used to hold the compressor in place. I began with the easy one to see if it was difficult to unfasten them. The first one was easy to undo. The problem with the second bolt was the space available to work. It took me more time and I had to use two different tools. Note, I didn't need to unplug the connector from the compressor. I simply cut the cable tie holding the harness loop and the wires were long enough to lower the compressor. The third bolt was removed without problem and it was easy to free the AC compressor. This view shows there was not enough room and the lower bracket was preventing the compressor from getting lower. So it had to be removed. Even without the bracket, the AC compressor was firmly attached with the AC lines and the space to get the alternator out was still very tight. Before removing the alternator, the eyelet connector and the locking connector had to be disconnected. It was difficult to film, so I made this separate video clip to show how to do it. To remove the alternator, I began by undoing the upper retaining bolt. The pivot bolt was well located and easy to undo. At the end, when there was no resistance while rotating the bolt, it meant the pivot nut was not holding on anymore. I simply had to pull out the bolt. Since the pivot bracket was still tightly compressed, I had to use a small pry bar to loosen it and get the alternator free. I followed the company procedure. The alternator was rotated 90 degrees with the pulley facing down and the upper bracket facing outboard. There was not enough room to work properly and the alternator was touching and scraping against the engine block, the frame, the AC lines and the AC compressor during the removal. This is such a poor engineering design from Chrysler. This is why some people are using other ways to remove the alternator. Later, I got a good rebuilt alternator generating proper voltage. The pulley was tested and it was working fine. To install the pivot brackets easily on the mounting bracket, the bushing had to be retracted. To do it, I used the bolt and the nut as shown. To insert the alternator in place, I held the pulley facing down and the upper bracket was facing outboard. I made sure the part was moving over the AC line connector. Once done, I wiggled the alternator between the bracket, the AC compressor, the frame and the AC line. When the alternator was fully inserted in the cavity, it was rotated to be installed on the brackets. The 
pivot bolt was installed on the alternator brackets, then it was anchored on the mounting bracket. For this moment, the remounting nut was simply installed finger tight. Since the alternator was loosely installed, it was easy to insert the upper bolt in place. Then it was time to refit the AC compressor. I began with the upper bolt. I continued with the second bolt in the inner position. When the compressor was holding in place, I reinstalled the AC bracket on the engine. To install the AC bracket bolts, I matched the 16 foot pounds used for the oil pan long bolts. After, when the third EC bolt was installed, there was not enough space to set the torque to 18 foot-pounds with my torque wrench. I relied upon my experience to safely tighten the bolts close to torque specs. To be safer, I added blue thread locker on the bolts. After, the alternator retaining bolts were properly tightened and the torque was set to 40 foot-pounds. The idler pulley was reinstalled. Again, the space was too tight to fit my torque wrench. This time I was able to use my custom tool to reach the bolt and set the torque to 35 foot-pounds. When the alternator and the AC compressor were reinstalled, I reconnected the alternator. To reinstall the drive belt, refer to my YouTube video. Before connecting the negative cable on the battery, I double-checked the installation to avoid any problem. I started the engine and it was running normally. There was no warning light flashing or illuminating in the cluster. I also checked the charging voltage on the battery and it was normal. After it was time to secure the electrical harness of the AC compressor and install the coolant reservoir, the engine cover, the air inlet, the fender liner, the dust shield and the wheel. During this work, I was not pleased to see that Chrysler mechanical engineers working with the best parametric software were not able to provide a proper space to replace the alternator easily.